I wanted to talk to you today about series wound motors. And there's a lot of questions on the internet on how they work, how they operate, how to fire them up and how to reverse the direction. They're pretty simple once you learn about them. You do have to kind of understand the fundamentals of what's going on and that kind of clears things up. They're called series wound motors. And I always thought that this was the reason and that's because the fields are in series with the armature. I did read an article online the other day where the guy said he thought they was called series wound motors because all of the fields that are underneath this casing are also in series. But regardless, this is a series wound motor. Now, basically what that means is you have to have the fields in series with the armature. And when you add power to here and here, it'll spin, it's DC power. If you reverse the polarity from here to here, it's still gonna spin the same direction. The only way you can make this motor spin the other direction is to disconnect the way you have it in series, like this. And now if you were to put power to here and here, it would spin the other direction. So you see what you're doing is you're flipping polarity of either the um, armature or you're flipping the polarity of the fields. Put them back in series and it'll spin the opposite direction. So pretty simple once you learn the basics on that. And they do make reversing contactors for series motors. They're kind of big and bulky. They look like this, uh, but you hook them up accordingly. And when the contactor's on or off, it switches the polarity of either the fields or the uh, armature accordingly. And that's how you get your reverse on your electric car. Because this particular motor is used in electric cars, it's used in my electric city car. You'll find these motors in forklifts, uh, golf carts as well. They're pretty popular. This particular motor is just a six horsepower GE motor from somewhere around 1976. Now, typically the way these lugs should be labeled uh, would be S1, and that's for series one. Although I've also seen them labeled F1 for fields one, okay? And this would be S2 for series two. And then these guys are the armatures or they connect to the armature. So this is gonna be A1 and this one down here would be A2. Now the order of these really isn't that important. Now with these city car motors, I wanted to point out that you can't fire these up on the workbench or you shouldn't. And that's because there's no bearings on this end of the motor. This end of the motor is supposed to float on the spline. Obviously the spline has bearings. If you try to run these on a, on a table like this, then there's nothing holding the, you know, the end of the motor up and it's gonna rub against the fields, which is not really healthy. In other words, I'd fire them up and show you how to change the directions. Now this is the other motor with the end plate on. Both motors are, are the same motor from the same era. The only thing in this end plate is a rubber seal. Again, there's no bearings on this end. This end is supposed to be supported by the spline of whatever it mates to. And the city car mates to a rear end and the spline has bearings and that's what holds this up from rubbing against the fields. Now the wires coming out of the top of this one is just an over temp sensor. It has no functionality of how the motor operates other than it tells you if the motor is too hot, it opens a set of contacts. And that's really all I have for you today. I, I just thought it'd be interesting to show you how a series wound motor operated. And hopefully there's somebody out there that's looking for questions and I was able to answer them. Uh, and again, these are usually used in golf carts and basically things that need a lot of low torque end forklifts or even electric cars. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos and at the very least, you might be entertained.